So this is Flicka. She somehow hurt her leg out in the pasture as we were trying to move the other ones. You can feel from about here to here. She's got increased heat. If it's a cold day, you can actually like see the section steaming. The adopter just left. Actually, they had a flat tire on their way here. How do you get a piece of shaving underneath your mask? So we had an amazing opportunity to get some medical supply items. I'm excited to see it. Right now, uh, I'm taking June up to quarantine so we can put her on the scale and we're gonna see what she weighs. Oh shoot, I can palpate bone. We got a bunch of horses jump the pasture. We gotta figure out where they got through and maybe we can see if we can get it fixed up. We're gonna run these horses down. A couple of those horses are hard to catch. And it looks like one of them has a cut on the inside of its, uh, I think it was the rear right leg so we're going to get that down here we do have our vet on site today so we're going to have her take a look oh that leg is bad so this is flicka she somehow hurt her leg out in the pasture as we were trying to move the other one and she really doesn't want to be caught right now All right, uh, an adopter just pulled in and I think they're here to see Tonka, so let's go get them checked in. This is Tonka. He's just a little high energy and he used to be a show horse probably, so. Hi. But he's definitely pretty. <laughs> It keeps his butt away from me, that's good. Was he an owner surrender? Um, no, he actually came in an auction rescue. I really? Think it was in March, if I remember correctly. Wow. Um, it, it just baffles me that people let, I can't stand auctions and stuff like that. Hey buddy. As high energy as he is on the ground, I will say he does really well under saddle. Um, I rode him for a few minutes, for a couple minutes one time. He did really good. Are you gonna be nice to me? Are you gonna be my friend? So Tonka is a bit high energy, so I just want to make sure that we show them at least another option that might be a little bit more calm. So we're going to pull up another horse for them to look at. When they walked in, I guess they said something about having jacks. And so we're trying to come up with an option that's not a mare. She is the um, That's still a good fit, but we don't have a lot of rideable horses right now. But Boomer is a sweet big boy also. Yeah, we just have him as a light rider for now just because he's so thin and we've only ridden him enough to kind of evaluate him and exercise him a little okay. bit. Um, he still needs a bit of weight, but he has gained quite a bit since he's been here too. You know, um, riding him lightly when he's even this thin can help him build up muscle. So don't be afraid to. Um, just also make sure he's also gaining weight like as you do that. We had one that she liked to kind of walk like this so that she could see out <laughs> on that side. Um, but he's been okay with it. He might still see, have some like, um, see some light out of that side. What is it? Do, what, do you know what? Oh, like what kind of blindness it is? I'm not sure. 
So usually this happens secondary to a significant corneal ulcer. Okay. So the cornea is the external surface of the eye and if it gets punctured or really badly scratched and then gets a secondary infection, the body tries to heal that over. In this case, that eye is completely blind. So you can assess, sorry, I'm like right in your no, face. You, you can assess with something called the menace response. If something comes towards your eye, you're gonna blink. So yeah. she can't see, he or she, he. he can't see out of that eye, but it shouldn't require any treatment. Normally, all of the parts of the eye that make tears stay normal. Okay. At one point, it was painful, right? Yeah. Whenever it's the infected. corneal ulcer was present um, and probably wasn't treated appropriately, that probably was a very painful eye. But usually by the time you get that full corneal scar, it's been two to four years that it's been like that. Poor buddy. Oh, sweet boy. <laughs> Wait, what do you think of him? Better. You like him? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a better fit for you. Yes, he's, I do he's too. He's a little bit more calm. <laughs> She is adopting Boomer. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> this is so exciting. Coming out here to Horse Plus has been absolutely amazing. This is like the best horse facility ever. I got Boomer and we're gonna put a little bit more weight on Boomer and then Boomer's gonna be just a trail companion and a smooch muffin and just a love bug. I found out about you guys a long time ago. I think I was looking at horses on Pet Finder and then I found one and then just followed the, followed the link. I will never do any other place other than here. So I would discontinue the Batril. She can go outside. I would monitor her. Her lung sounds are totally clear. She has a little bit of elevated sounds on her trachea, but that can be irreversible if they've had an upper respiratory infection. So. Of some electrolytes and some probiotics for that diarrhea. Is she getting grain? Yes. Okay, great. So if you guys have a Meprazole capsules, which I think you do, she would just get one capsule once a day for about seven days. So we just took a look at this mare. She's been on antibiotics for a lung infection and her lung sounds are really nice and clear today. So that's great. That's an indication that those bacteria have been killed off and she can stop the antibiotics Unfortunately, sometimes antibiotics can affect their gut flora, so she has some diarrhea, and so she's gonna get some treatment to help replace that normal flora and also some electrolytes um, to maintain hydration. She also has some evidence of some uh, pain in her spine, and so she was pretty amenable to having it adjusted today, but she needs a little bit more adjustment, and she gets to go outside. This looks awesome. We can stop bandaging this. Okay. Um, what I wanna make sure is that we don't end up with fly strike. If we see any kind of insect irritation, mm -hmm. we need to recover it, but um, I think it would really benefit from some, some, air. some sunshine and oxygen. Let me get that cleaned. So I just put some antimicrobial Manuka honey spray on there and then I covered it with SWAT ointment. One of the ways that we can have complications from open wounds is if we have insects really irritate that young healthy tissue. So she's doing very, very well. 
And this wound is healed to the point that it doesn't need to be bandaged, but we want to make sure that we don't have flies irritating it. So the SWAT ointment is basically a ointment form of fly repellent that is safe to put right on wounds. Okay. Oh, you are so cute. How you doing? I think this one also we can do same, same as with the other one where we're going to clean it. I'm going to pick different topicals for this one than the other one, but Yay. super happy with how that looks. She had, um, she had some vertebrae that were completely stuck up in her withers that are now moving. So it's pretty cool when they have vertebrae that have been stuck, you can probably feel the heat release. If you run your hand down, you can feel from about here to here. She's got increased heat oh, yeah. and that's where we were stuck. So once that movement happens, it's funny people, some of chiropractic and stuff like that, people are like, oh, you're crazy. And then you're like, if it's a cold day, you can actually like see the section steaming. So you can tell people ahead like, watch for steam. So she looks great. I'm very happy with her. So we are gonna want Proudsoft just over this front part where there's that kind of prolapsy red tissue. And then we're just gonna do SWAT everywhere else. And he shouldn't need this every day, but as needed to make sure we don't have flies. So Denali is another one of our post-enucleation patients. He had his eye surgically removed and had a little bit of infection, which is a common complication. So he's been on some antibiotics. His recheck today, I'm very happy with. There's no signs of lingering infection. We scheduled him to have his sutures removed next Monday. Those stitches can dissolve over time, but we like to take them out because sometimes the body can recognize it as something foreign over time. So we're gonna keep a close eye on that, but after next Monday, he should be fully in the clear and he's adjusting really well to the loss of that eye. So we're pretty happy. So this is Flicka. She and some other horses in the pasture decided to get out and it looks like she was the instigator. So when she broke down the fence, she has a cut on her leg that we're going to check out. Oh shoot. We're in the joint capsule. I will tell you exactly where I need it to be. Mm -hmm. The plate is going to be in a wee bit of a precarious position because you're gonna have to come from this side. She is at a pretty good plane of sedation. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why we wanna take that radiograph because if we have a little shard of something in there, we need to make sure that that gets removed as soon as possible. I'm optimistic because she has a pretty large bruise on the outside of the leg and once that bruise goes down, we might find that it's not the joint itself. I need to get this medicine in her mouth. It's a really small volume. So instead of using the syringe, I'm gonna see if I can just get my finger on the side of her mouth. Perfect. This mare sustained an injury to her back right leg. She has an open wound over the bigger joint in that leg called the stifle that's about an inch and a quarter deep. What we're concerned about is whether or not that penetrating wound communicates with the joint. So we're gonna put her on some antibiotics. We give her some pain and anti-inflammatory medication today and we'll recheck her in a couple days. If it doesn't communicate with the joint, easy peasy, this wound should clear up and not be a big deal. But if it does, that really changes the prognosis. These adopters have been here before. They actually have already seen Tess and Sparkles, so they knew that they wanted them. So they're gonna be here to pick them up um, and just do a quick little adoption appointment. They're taking Tess and Sparkles.
Oh, your papers. <laughs> Thank you. But I wasn't sure what you guys... We could take the tire off, they could take it in. I mean, that shouldn't be an issue. Yep. Uh, the adopter just left. Actually, they had a flat tire on their way here. They aired it up, but they didn't want to bring the horses home with a flat tire, so they're going to go into town to get their tire fixed, and then they're going to come back and pick them up. So the adopters just got back from the tire shop. They got some new rubber put on their rim. I'm about to put it back on and then we can get the horses loaded up and they can head home. Petfinder is an amazing platform that I use every day in my work as the adoption specialist at Horse Plus to make sure that all of our potential adopters know what horses that we have available. For adopters looking to adopt a horse, you can click on our adoptions tab at the top of our page on our website, horseplushumanesociety.org. If you scroll down, you can find our adoption application here, but if you keep scrolling, you'll see all of our Petfinder profiles that are automatically posted here as soon as I post a new horse to Pet Finder. Horses are automatically posted to our website as soon as I um, click publish on Pet Finders. On the pro side of things, um, this is what it looks like when I post a horse to Pet Finder. All of the horse's basic information, it shows me how many people have viewed the horse, um, it shows me how many inquiries people have made about that horse and how long ago I posted it, as well as all of their basic information and I can change their status here too easily if they were adopted. If I wanna post a new pet, I can either go over here to add a pet and click on horse, where it'll give me a blank template that I can enter all of the information for. Or what I usually do is use a template where basically it has all of the information that would be used over and over and over again that's already in here. For example, all of our horses are vaccinated, so that's automatically um, selected as yes for every single horse. It gives me options to select whether the horse is good with children, dogs, other animals. Um, I can also put in um, information for behind the scenes that's not shown to the public. For example, the horse's horse plus number, um, as well as the date that we intook that horse and any other notes that don't need to be published publicly, but that might help me remember what I need to know about that horse. For each horse, I can upload up to six photos or videos, and it makes it so easy for me to upload them because once I have them down here, I can just drag and drop. It makes it super, super simple. Now that it's uploaded, I can click on the photo and crop it as needed or just use it the way that it is. And if I upload multiple photos, then I have the option to select which one shows up as the primary photo when the horse's picture is posted down here on the adoptions page. Pet Finder always shows me how many um, pets that I have posted at any given time. So I know whether I have every single horse posted based on my list that I keep here. My list that I keep here is alphabetical, and so if I want to organize the Pet Finder posts alphabetically, I can sort them from A to Z, so that they're in the exact same order that my list is in, which makes it really easy when I'm looking for a specific horse. Thousands of organizations use Pet Finder to post their available animals, and lots and lots of people are very aware of Pet Finder. And we get a lot of inquiries of people looking for pets from Pet Finder and they've never even heard of us before. They just found the horse posted on Pet Finder. So it really helps us to um, put horses out there so that people know that we have them and people learn more about us and then we're able to save more horses. Horse Plus has been using Pet Finder to post available horses for nearly two decades and we don't know what we would do without it. So is the horse for the girls? It is for, for Diana. Diana. Okay, okay. So this is Annie. So I'll let y'all go in and meet her. And another look alike. Have you guys had horses before? Oh yeah. No, yeah? Okay. 
They have two. So it's not your first one. Okay. No, I race in, I race in between the horses. I just, I live in the city for 22 years and finally I'll find me a property up on the country. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's got Great. two gated horses. Right I have a horse since I was nice. little. Do you ride trails? Yeah. Okay. It's really like it. spooky. I like that Annie is like sensitive and she's like forward, but she has a good stop. What do you think, Diana? You like her? She, she likes, likes her. her. <laughs> you can see that smile. Yeah, I talked to her. She, she really likes her. You think she you is. want to take her home? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Sweet Annie. <laughs> They're adopting Annie. Taylor or oh. what? Oh, Corey, what's going, on? what's going on? This is Annie. Yeah. She was just. Oh yeah. Are you gonna go ahead and bring her out for getaway? I love it. Oh. Okay. Leave it. Good just a quick visit. <laughs> Bye, Annie. We was looking for something for my my daughter, actually. Uh, Carolyn, they tell us about this place, and there's a, it's a pretty good experience, and there you go, we got one. This is actually my fifth time here. My, me and my mom's fifth time here. Uh, we adopted Tina, sadly she didn't work out, brought her back, and when we brought her back, we adopted Liberty, and when Liberty passed, my mom needed, wanted to look for a new horse to kind of fill in the whole, huge hole that Liberty left in her heart, and we adopted Rico at the beginning of this year. We met Erdman and um, started giving his daughter lessons, and she needed a beginner horse, and that's when found Annie, and she was like the perfect fit. Annie has connected so much with her, and there's no doubt about it, they're over there just loving. This is Lucy. She just came out of quarantine. I've put one ride on her so far and we're gonna do another today. She gets extremely buddy sour and she likes to sit back and flip sometimes tied up. And she acts like she will flip back under saddle when she gets to seeing a friend and you try making her walk away. So now that we don't have a friend out here, we're gonna see how she does under saddle without seeing anybody outside of the round pen, because in the round pen, she does great. People do it for different reasons, but I do it for exercising them and then getting them warmed up to ride. And then once you get the saddle on, I'll be doing it again. And just so you can see if they're wanting a buck today or not. But that's mainly why I, I do this. This horse right here does not have personal space and that is one thing we are having to work on because she will hit you with her head while you're trying to do anything with her. Um, and just randomly standing still, she will also do that. But we're gonna have to definitely work on that for somebody who would want to adopt her in the future because they may not like her being in your personal space. So we're trying to get that covered. But she does everything else great. Backs up fine, picks up all four feet. She just does not have personal space. I am going to take her outside the round pen and see if she does any better today than she did the other day. Hopefully she won't try anything like flipping over, but if she does, emergency dismount, or however I can get off at the time. I think now I'm gonna try taking her through the alleyway and getting near rain, just to see if she acts up again, because it could just be a buddy sour thing. Maybe. She could just have an attitude. 
We shall see. Lucy done better this time. She got a little iffy throughout in here. Um, she done a whole lot better with rain. So I think it's mostly attitude issue with a little bit of buddy sourness. And so I feel like it'll be pretty easy to work that out so she can become a better horse for somebody. So just some more working with her. She may be when I work every day just so she knows that she can't get away with anything she's wanting to pull off. And also she did not try to flip over today, so that was amazing. So I definitely think she will end up being a really good horse for someone. He's like, free me. I'm, we're cleaning out the cat room and I found this little guy in there. Cute. Yeah, but not a kitty, so we're gonna set him free out here <laughs> near some water. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> so this is Miney over here. I gotta get her caught for the farrier. Um, we have a farrier coming out. I think she's doing about 10 horses. But for right now, I gotta get this one caught, who is kind of unhandled. And we gotta give her some dorm gel so she can be nice and relaxed with the leg cocked up and a loop drooping for the farrier. So this is Dorm Jill. Dorm is so, you know what? It's Dorm Jill. Okay. <laughs> um, it just kind of helps these guys relax. It's a little better than giving them something IV. And we've noticed it actually works a lot better. It kicks in in about 30 to 40 minutes. And then they'll pretty much let you do anything that you want to them. Helps keep the horses safe if we can actually get it on board. And you just stick it underneath the tongue, full tube. And in about 30 minutes, she will be the epitome of relaxed. <laughs> well, today we got the ferry coming out. She'll be out here in just a little bit. We're gonna start in the, uh, the 10 stall barn here with a couple horses, and then we're gonna move over to the training barn. Do a couple more over there, and then I believe we got some up in quarantine that we got to finish up today too. So it's going to be a busy day, but we'll get her done. I know you didn't know you're going to be filmed today. You weren't ready for it, huh? This is June. She's been very underweight we've got her up to a weight where we think she's good enough to be able to get her feet trimmed and uh, hopefully she'll get all four feet done and she won't be hurting anymore and she'll continue on her path to get to a good weight you know gaining weight and muscle and everything else once her feet are comfortable yep she's still there See, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, she's doing she's doing really good right now with the farrier. Uh, just standing nice and still, smelling her, making sure, you know, just real relaxed, ready to just get her feet done. She seems she's happy. Huh, you're happy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, you can smile, huh? It's like, where'd she go? <laughs> Here's part of her hoof that we trimmed off. That's about a half an inch or so off her toe. And so this is going to make her a lot more comfortable. It's going to help her rotate better and just stand a lot more comfortably. And when we walk her, because during the day, I like to take her out on a walk, we'll let her stretch her legs. And this is going to make it so she's a lot more comfortable. She's doing really good considering she just needs lots of breaks where she's at with her weight right now and her feet, it's hard to keep them up for that long. So we're just letting her get a break. She was asking for one. So we'll give her about a minute or two and then we'll go back at it. Instead of coming down on the center of her foot, all of her weight was coming down on her heel. So she definitely needs her foot backed up. No signs of founder though, they look great. Yeah, it's like I'm building a hoof right there. 
Okay, so she's got some heel bruising right here. And that's just because of how run forward her foot was. All of her weight was coming down on her heel instead of at the widest point of her foot. So we backed up this whole hoof. So she's got good weight distribution now. And that should eliminate the bruising. It's most likely just there because all of her weight was coming down on her heel. The front hoofs are all done. They're nice and cleaned up. And now we're just gonna move on to the back ones and she's doing great so far. I'm holding her up or trying to at least. She keeps trying to get her foot down. It's like Lyle's figuring it out though. He's putting on his knee there. She did really good for her trim. She should be feeling a whole lot better now. We got all that length off of there. Over the next few days, it may take her a little bit of time to adjust, but overall, this is what's best for her and she's gonna feel great. What's pretty surprising about her is, though she's malnourished and you can really see it in her muscle, her feet turned out to be pretty healthy uh, considering her uh, body conditions. But a lot of times you see a reflection of how their uh, how their nutrition can really take an effect on their feet and she's lucky enough she didn't have that much of a problem. She seems like a real sweet horse. Mm -hmm. She is. She's gonna be massive whenever she gets away. Yeah. She's a big horse. Mm -hmm. I like her. Unfortunately we had an accident. Um, one of the horses uh, Corey had been working with to try to get his feet done, but he has uh, unfortunately hurt himself um, while we we're gonna try to get his feet done. So I'm gonna send it off uh, pictures to our vet and see how she wants us to proceed. Um, these things do happen sometimes. Well, he's figuring out that's not gonna hurt him, so he's standing pretty still for it now. Round pens are a great place to work with horses and hoses because um, it's safe and uh, Trying to reach Doc, uh, talk to our vet. Um, she works at a different place, so she is busy, but uh, we're gonna see about um, trying to get Doc out here uh, to help this guy out. It's a level of complication because we can't go in and treat him every day and just wrap his legs and stuff because he is still very um, wild and he does kick when he's scared, uh, but we're gonna do what we can for him. This is Bryce, AKA Batman. But we're gonna trim his feet up today and see how he does. You don't have to breathe so hard. I'm not gonna you hurt can you. Chill. Just a little bit. Good boy. You're fine. Really? Wasn't so bad, was it? Easy, buddy. He done great. Stood there fine for the most part. I think uh, Lyle might have a different story, but from my end, he stood great and uh, we didn't have any issues. Feet look good, I think. They look good. Yeah. Feet are He's good. He's got, got some toe cracks in the front, but they'll trim out with a regular trim, so nothing to worry about. We gotta replace the bandages underneath his mask from his eye. I'm sorry. Is that what you meant to go wrong? Yeah. Something? There we go. Oh, this one's not. Might help me undo everything. There you go, buddy. Mm. But from his eye inoculation the other day, we just keep it covered. So we put ointment and things on a bandage inside of his mask to keep the flies out of it, heal it up faster, and just to make him a little bit more comfortable. How do you get a piece of shaving underneath your mask? Batman. So we did nine out of the 10 trims today and the nine went really great. Everybody stood good. 
They had good feet, no issues other than a little bit of thrush. We had one Mustang we couldn't get done, but with future training, we will get her done. Her feet weren't too bad, so it'll be okay to wait. They just had a little bit of a flare. So overall, it was a good day and everything went well. Coming along, I got three of the stalls all steeled up. I'm working on the fourth one here. And I got the back side to do, yeah. After that, uh, gonna try and get stall fronts on, I think sometime today. Uh, at least these ones here. And then after I get all the stalls done, I gotta put a ceiling or put steel up on top of the uh, oh. other side of the vet barn. Well, today we're going to try to put some stall fronts on in the vet barn. So right now we're moving some plywood and stuff to make it clear so we can get in and start working. <laughs> That's going to be where we're going to hang the hay, you know, corner feeders more than likely and then uh, that way they can get in and out. We'll have a swing door right here to bring the horses in and out. Make it simple. We got two left. We got a small one, five and five eighths here, and a five and seven eighths here. The farthest one down, because of the roll-up door, I'm gonna have to inset uh, to make it work uh, and I'll have to add some two by sixes to the inside of the poles so I have something to mount it to. But because the roll-up door is there and its framework is already there, we've got to set the door back so it, and, to make it work. But nice. just a couple simple tweaks and we'll have it work. Come in, you flip it. Yeah, pull the door open. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Nice swing. It went good. We got it done. Um, didn't, didn't take too long. They weren't heavy. Corey didn't trip and fall, which is good. Thought he was going to a couple of times and he whined, but it's all right, it's good. But uh, we got them all set in on this side. Now we're gonna work on the other side, maybe a little bit later on this afternoon. We'll see how it goes. This is Frances here. She is about eight years old. Um, we got her in the September auction. So she's been here, I think about eight, nine months now. We've worked with her a little bit. When we first got her, she really didn't want to lead. Um, she really didn't know much of anything, but she leads really well now. She's got her head in a nice low position. Uh, right here, I'm working on flexion, so I just want her head to come towards me, and every single time that she tries, I'm gonna give her that release. And right there is about where you want her to be flexed at. So right here, I'm gonna ask her for those hindquarters to move over. There we go. Give her some encouragement. And the idea with this is to get her to back up off of light pressure with her head down. So after she gets a little more comfortable just backing up there, I might hold it a little longer and wait for her to actually put her head down for me. Not too many people are looking for meals, but she'll make someone a nice little meal one day. You can train her up to pack off for her. You can train her up to, to ride. I'm sure she'll be pretty good. She can jump really high too. So if you get her trained up the right way, you might be able to even do some, uh, some jumping on her. She might win you some money on that one. Yeah. 
She did really good with her front feet there. Um, she actually let me grab them and pick them out. And she still needs a little bit more work on her back feet just to understand what that pressure means, but it's definitely an improvement from the last time we worked on it. I have 103 animals that I have to post to a different adoption platform because Petfinder decided to ban us. Um, I am currently on number 18, <laughs> so I'm a little less than 20% of the way there. So part of the problem of reposting all of the horses that were previously posted on Petfinder is that um, a lot of the photos were on my personal phone and I usually keep them only uh, long enough to post them on um, Petfinder. And so some of them I still had on my phone, but I have to go back like months and months ago from when I took the photo or just go take a new photo. But you know, there's like over a hundred animals on the property. And so taking photos of a hundred animals could easily take me weeks, especially if I'm gonna get good photos. So it can be very time consuming to even just find the right photos, which actually still is faster than going to take new photos of all the new animals. So um, yeah, keep me in your thoughts and prayers. So here's a few of our donkeys. It's by far not all of them. So cute. So what are these guys' histories? Are they all the same? Are they different different places? We got them all from a livestock auction, so we don't really know much about them um, before that. Out here we have some of the ladies too, some of the Jennies. Yeah, so since you guys were talking about how you might want more in the future, you know, a pregnant mom <laughs> might be like a good fit. Oh, we had the discussion on the way here. <laughs> Because he was he was trapped in the truck with me, so oh, yeah. I was like, I couldn't escape. And I think of the three of them, Ivy is the sweetest. Yeah. They're still a little shy, but they're curious. So, could I go in or no? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, there you go. She's saying she's saying hi now. What are you thinking, Sam? I'm amazed there's so much difference in character of each of each one. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Oh yeah. And they've all they've all got their own uh, personality, just like just like horses. Yeah. Y'all's giraffes, oh, so beautiful. I swear you were saying giraffes. Giraffes. <laughs> oh, is that, that Can we go home with a giraffe? <laughs> that confused me. What are you thinking, Sam? I mean, you've, you're convincing me, Tracy. I think we bonded already. I had never seen her away from her friends, so I didn't even know that she led or that picked up her feet, so. She does, she does good when she's away from them. Yeah, I love her coloring. I love her. Period. Oh, She's wow. Crushed. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love them both. Wink, wink. <laughs> I honestly think getting her away from her two bad influences is going to be amazing for her. Are you sure it's not just me? And my, my loving heart? <laughs> she might just love you. That's what it is. What do you think? I think she's it. Because I like a little bit of a challenge and but she has a nice, she has a sweet spirit, it seems, you know. No, I think that's, I think, I think that'll, you know, fulfill the objective and then, uh, yeah. um, I think, I think the farm will get a kick out of having a, a little, you know, baby donkey. What is a baby donkey called? A farm. It's a baby farm. Uh, yeah, it's still, it's still a foal, I think. She said we could get a henny though. Because yeah, we don't know who the baby daddy is. So, so it's not a mule, it's a... It's, it's like a mule, but it's instead of having a horse for a mother, it has a donkey for a mother. Uh, and the horse is the, the, the dad. Uh, it's a possibility. She was likely bred by a jack, but there's a possibility that she was bred by a horse. Will you accept but this she rose? Eat them, no, no, like, will you accept this rose? Yeah. I see what you're doing there. You see what I'm laying well, down? You picking so up cute. when I'm laying down? So are you happy, Tracy? I'm ecstatic. Look at that cloud. What are you doing? Just look at the cloud. Oh my God. It's so dark. It's pretty impressive. They're taking Ivy. She is so cute. We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> Thank you 
guys so much. Thank you. If you guys enjoy her, feel free to send us all the updates. We'd love to see, oh, we will. you know, what she ends up having. So. I know. So y'all are good to load up. Thank y'all. Thank you. So we were looking for a donkey to protect our uh, senior horses. So we, uh, we've had a coyote problem out there for a few years now. So it'd be good to, as they age, one's got arthritis, to have some protection. So we, uh, we found Ivy here. And she's, she's perfect. Yeah, she's spirited. <laughs> she's, uh, she's pretty. So we're looking forward to having her out there and, and uh, meeting the rest of the animals out there. She's pregnant, right? Yes. So how does that work out for you guys? <laughs> I got my way. <laughs> so it's a little extra than what uh, you know what we were thinking originally, but uh, I think that'll add some life to the farm. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, a little foal joining joining the farm. We've got some um, uh, pygmy goats as well out there. So I think the uh, I think the foal's duty will be to protect the pygmy goats. That'll be a good fit. It's awesome. Yeah. You guys are very friendly and helpful and. Yeah, you've got a good place out here doing a lot of good work. It's closing time and Dawn just got to work. <laughs> but she's been actually up working for a long time because we had an amazing opportunity to get some um, veterinarian uh, medical supply items from a veterinarian that's retiring. Yes. So you did a really long drive today. 740 miles. Phew. Been up on the road since 4.30 this morning. But the really cool thing is we now have an ultrasound machine and a lot of other really cool A equipment. lot. My port Equinox is loaded down with wow. all sorts of stuff. I'm excited to see it. So let's dig in. Okay. Ultrasound machine, which they she sent so we can do internal for mares Pretty and for tendons and, and tendons and stuff like that. This is so exciting. I know a lot of you all have been wanting us to get an ultrasound machine and now we have one. The big is an incubator to keep all of our saline solutions. So if we give IVs to horses warm. So, so we have body get, temperature. Yeah. And that's and probably your, your lunch. Nope. No? Vaccines. Donated vaccines. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so awesome. Uh, we, we did have to purchase some of this stuff and some of it was donated. So um, just a wonderful opportunity for our organization. Um, super excited. We have a vet on staff now as an employee and now we're getting medical equipment. Microscope. We're doing fecals. And I can't remember a what she said. Blood spinner. Yes. Okay, so she gave us a lot of stuff oh. beyond what we purchased because yes. we purchased the ultrasound machine. Yes, I mean she and just some of those other things. But. She just kept loading up my my car with more oh. stuff. That's so cool. And set it to the temperature it needs to be, and warm fluids for horses. Some blades for filing hoofs, and she said this is a whole dental kit. Please don't use that on my teeth. <laughs> this is, she said it's a heavy duty razor that can get the fur of donkeys that are really matted off. She said this would be good for that kind of stuff. It's really exciting that our vet barn is coming close to completion and we're getting medical equipment. We're going to be able to help horses not only here at our shelter, but also other organizations too. Um, you know, we'd love to help them with procedures and hopefully open up uh, gelding clinic programs and so much more. Um, part of rescue is providing top quality medical care. And that's what we're working towards with this building and getting a vet on staff and our medical team and all that. So we're, we're really excited about all of this.
So right now, uh, June got her feet trimmed up this morning. So now we're gonna take her on a walk. We let her rest because it was a lot of work for her this morning. Uh, you know, took, took a lot on her with her, the way she is. But we got the feet all, or her hoofs trimmed up. So now we're gonna take her out on a walk and let her stretch out and see how she does on her shorter feet. Did you eat all your food? I hope so. How's that feel? Much better? Hmm? We'll probably do just a short walk because the, the tendons and the muscles and everything are gonna have to readjust. So we'll just do a couple few short walks with her today and then throughout the week, weekend, we'll do some more, help her build the muscles back up, help her level out her feet and then uh, Hopefully by next week, she'll be real excited. Doing real good next week. What is this? Yeah, making the noise. <laughs> we'll go this way this time. There's more horses over here that you can't get close to, but you can look at from a distance. All of this up here underneath her chin was a big old indention. And now, if you look, you can almost, it's still pretty bad, but it's a lot better than it used to be. It used to be sucked all the way up like that. And now when she raises her head, it actually is almost flatter, almost flat. She's definitely doing a lot better, feeling a lot better and looking a lot better. Oh, oh, oh. You're taking me back to better days. 